Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I thought I would hit record and just document the process of me setting up a brand new layout in Cinema 4D. Every time there's a new version of Cinema 4D, I always make a brand new layout and put the tools that I use the most at arm's reach, rather than have to go through menus and to go find anything that I need. So if you're looking to customize your layout or if you're just interested in how I set mine up, and especially if you're a Plus member and wanna see where I put all of the Grayscale Gorilla tools so that I can work super fast inside of Cinema 4D, you're gonna to wanna to watch today's video. And with that, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started customizing our layout so that we can work faster and have the tools that we use the most at our fingertips. So the first thing I like to do is grab whatever renderer I'm using and put it in the interface. Right now you can see the Redshift uh, button up here is, is off by default with a fresh install, which is what I have now. So you can go over to Edit, go to Preferences, and you're going to go down to Renderer, open this up, go to Redshift. Make sure that this button is on right here, Redshift Main Menu. It's off by default. You wanna make sure this is on. And this will stay on once you turn it on in your interface. Next thing you wanna do is go into your render settings and turn on Redshift. And this is going to make the Redshift uh, tab here available. While your render settings are open, I encourage you to drag it into your interface because this is a panel I use a lot. So just grab these three dots and bring them over here and drop them on top of those three dots. Now you have your view and your render settings and you could jump between them really quickly. Uh, I also like to dock my uh, picture viewer. So you can click right here for your picture viewer. It opens it up as a window. And then rather it popping up and down, anything I wanna use a lot, I just dock it. So drag it over here on top of render settings. And now we have view, render settings, picture viewer, boom. What next? Well, let's add that Redshift menu. So, uh, or the viewport. So go in your Redshift uh, tab up here and go down to render shift, render view. That's gonna pop this open. And obviously if you're using Octane or Arnold, uh, you wanna just dock this in the same place. So uh, to dock it over here, I want it next to my view. Uh, just grab these three lines and drag it over until the, uh, the this line is where you want it to pop in. See, look at the bottom. Down at the bottom, it's all it goes all the way to the bottom. I don't want that. I'm gonna move my uh, mouse slightly left until it pops right there so my timeline stays where it is and my render view goes boom right where I want it. That is exactly what I want. So now you can move uh, these in between and anything you put over here will start to show up in your render view as you need it. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, this is where um, I start to just save this, right? So this is a good start. Uh, these are the kind of basics that I use and always kind of have set up. So you can go to window and go to customization and go to save as startup layout. And this way, every time you open a new scene or open Cinema 4D, it'll just default to this. You don't have to do all this stuff. Um, now from here, uh, there are Grayscale Gorilla tools. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla uh, Plus member, you obviously have access to all of the tools. And I like to dock the library down here and some of our other tools like Drop Zone over here so that I can work really fast use HDRI link really quickly, and just have the tools I, I, I use all the time at my fingertips. So since this is a fresh uh, install, we don't have the Grayscale Gorilla tab up here. So of course, you need to download the latest version of the hub. So go log into your Grayscale Gorilla Plus um, if you're a member, and you're gonna see that uh, go to the hub installation. This will be in your main menu. I'll also put a link down below just so you could have this. Here is where you'll always find the latest version of the hub. Now the hubs obviously what lets you download and install everything really easily and quickly. And we keep this really up to date with the latest version. So here you're gonna see I'm on Windows. You just open this up and go down to 2023. And once you have that selected, you're gonna download the hub and it's going to download in Chrome here. And so let's just go ahead and show in Finder. Here you're gonna find the zip file and you're going to right click on the zip file and you're going to extract it. Now you can extract it here or you could use an extract tool like 7-zip or anything else, anything you use to unzip files. Here I'm just gonna say uh, extract files 
It's gonna ask me where. The defaults are fine, it's just gonna put it right in the same spot here. And I'm going to, um, it's gonna put it right here below my zip file. So let's open that up. And uh, you can see it actually has a one next to it. That's because I already downloaded it down here. So let's, let me just go to the original and open it up and show you. This is essentially just a plugin. So you can just go back to your downloads and go ahead and copy this plugin. You wanna make sure this is selected, not the zip, but the actual file. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna go back to Cinema 4D, go to Edit, Preferences, and head down into this Preferences folder. Now, in here, you're gonna see any Cinema 4D uh, versions in, that you have installed right here. You wanna to go to the latest one here in 2023, and if you have other versions, we have plugins for everything above R20. So I'm gonna open up 2023. I'm also gonna go into uh, library. No, I take that back. I'm gonna go into plugins. Um, and I'm going to just paste that plugin right in here. So you can see now we have the uh, R27, which is now called 2023, installed in the plugins. I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna close this down. And because we saved all this, we can actually just quit Cinema 4D. We gotta restart to install that plugin, and then we're off to the races. So let's go ahead and quit. Do we wanna save this? Nope. Now the, the interface is still saved, don't forget. So let's just scroll down here and open up 2023. Got that nice new animation there. It's loading up. And if we did it right, it should open with the same startup layout that we saved previously. All right, let's close the quick start dialog and there we are, boom. So now from here, you're gonna see you have a Grayscale Gorilla menu up here. You can op open up the Grayscale Gorilla Hub. And if you're a newer member of Grayscale Gorilla, um, you're gonna have to sign in. Make sure you put your email and your um, uh, password here if you're not already signed in. If you are signed in, you're gonna be able to download all of our plugins and then over here in stock assets, this will not show anything until you uh, install the library. So from here, I'm just gonna say select all. Let's let's install all of this stuff. These are all of our plugins and scripts and tools and everything else that we make to help you work faster. So let's click install. You're gonna see it goes very quickly and you don't have to hand install any of this stuff. Uh, any of this stuff. Once you have the hub installed, the hub does the rest. Okay, once you have it all installed, this window will pop up and say, hey, good news, it's all installed. You just have to restart to access all of these plugins and so let's do just that. Let's do a quick restart. And before uh, we restart, let's go into our edit preferences and head down to our Grayscale Gorilla menu and make sure that we tell um, uh, Grayscale Gorilla where to put our uh, downloads, if we're gonna download any materials or HDRIs or anything like that. And even more importantly, if you already are a customer and have downloaded stuff in the past, you don't have to re-download all your materials and HDRIs. All you have to do is point it to the same folder where you downloaded your other stuff. In fact, you could use multiple versions of Cinema 4D and just point it all at this same um, uh, folder where you it, where you have Grayscale Gorilla install all of this stuff. So if there, nothing's here, go ahead and make a place on your hard drive to put it. If you already have it, go ahead and click this button and go to your hard drive where it is. In this case, I have uh, this folder right here called GSG Assets. I'm gonna select the folder. And then when we restart, it's all gonna load in all of your stuff without needing to download all of those big files and you're up and running. So let's go ahead and do a restart. Let's quit. Okay, now that we restarted and everything Grayscale Gorilla is now installed, Let's set up some of uh, my favorite Grayscale Gorilla tools just so I could work faster. And I encourage you to do the same if you're a Plus member, things like Drop Zone in the library. Let's go ahead and dock that in our interface and this is how to do it. So let's first come down to the Plus library and open that up. It's gonna open up the Plus library and because I've already downloaded this stuff in the past, all of my uh, libraries are here. If you don't have these libraries or if you're new to Grayscale Gorilla, just go on up to the Grayscale Gorilla Hub, go to the Stock Assets tab, and here is where you could download everything, including um, HDRI packs, material packs, gobos, animated gobos, uh, all the stuff that we have to help you work faster. And you could do it for Arnold, Octane, and Redshift. So, since I already have it all ready to go, let's dock this in our interface. 
I like to have it below where my viewport and renderer is. So grab these three lines and head down here until that line goes all the way across both the view and the renderer right there, let go, and it's gonna dock right in there. So now I can grab um, right in between it all and I could just scale it down so it's not taking as much space. So now I have my library, I could search everything very quickly and it's all ready to go. So from here, I can now go install Drop Zone. If you haven't used Drop Zone, it's probably, other than the library, my most used plugin. Um, it helps you set up HDRI link, it helps you set up signal, it's super, super useful. Check out our tutorials on Drop Zone if you haven't seen it. So uh, go ahead and open Drop Zone. All it is is a little drop zone. <laughs> So it's really easy to dock. You don't need a lot of space for it. You could actually put it in this little sliver right here if you really want to make it small. But I like putting it right above my attributes and basically in between my objects and attributes. Again, grab these three dots, drag it over, and boom, there's drop zone. So a couple things I want to do here. I don't need it that big. Uh, pardon me, I'm on window, so this, this arrow is so narrow of letting me drag this. There we go. And that looks good. You could squish it way down. And to save even more room, you can right click on these three dots here, uh, or just click on it, I guess. Thought it was a right click. So click on these three dots and head down to uh, show window title and boom, now it, where it said drop zone, it's a Grayscale Gorilla drop zone, it's gone. Just saves you a little bit of room. You can do the same with the library as well if you wanna save room. You can do that with anything you want to save room. We can do it with the Redshift render view. Boom, saves a little bit of space. Okay, so we're getting close here. There's one last thing I wanna do and that is install some of the scripts that we have at Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So go to your extensions, go to user scripts, and in here you're gonna find some of the um, scripts that are included in Grayscale Gorilla Plus, including the lens tools and the rotation tools. So let's start with the lens tools. So open up the lens tools and click this little area above. And once you click on it, it's gonna separate it. So now this is a separate little box docking system that we can adjust to put it right down here. So let's go ahead and click on, uh, right click on these little dots here. And now we're gonna adjust it. So first of all, we don't wanna show the text, we only wanna show the icons. Let's right click again and go to icon size and say, uh, let's go with large icons for now. We may have to shrink these down. Uh, oh, I have a friend requ request. No thank you, Epic. Who's trying to be my friend out there in the world? Uh, uh, I mean, I appreciate you. Okay, so let's go to medium icon size. Let's go to, uh, uh, rows and columns, change orientation, that's what we want because this is gonna go left to right, not up and down. Now that we have it the way we want, we could grab it and say, I want it to go under drop zone. Um, and there it is. And we could just re-shrink drop zone down. Now we have our lens tools and we can just easily add a camera and select any lens we want right here super easily. Last thing we'll do is go up to uh, the same place, extensions, user scripts, go to rotation tools and do the same thing. Let's right click and change orientation. Right click again, go to icon size. We may have to make these small to fit there. Uh, let's go to show, no text. And let's see if we could dock it right over to the side here. There it is, boink. Um, and it looks like it came in top to bottom again. So let's just right click on it, say change orientation and see if we can't move this and just scale it over. Uh, again, it's real narrow, the little slider window, boom. Okay, so last thing we'll do is right click on this one more time and make the medium icons, that's fine. And give this a little bit more room to breathe. Okay, now we it fits. So. If you're not familiar with these rotation tools, uh, if you have you know something like a plane in your scene and you just wanna rotate it by 90 degrees, I use these with lights all the time, just quickly move my lights, super useful. And then of course the camera tools do that as well. Okay, so now um, I think we're in a pretty close place. Let's, let's adjust this a little bit more. Let's drag this up and just make a little bit more room for attributes. Let's look and see if we have everything we need. 
And the best part is you could always update this as you go. I'm feeling good about this. Let's go to window. Let's go to customization and say, save as startup layout. Now, if you don't wanna make it a startup layout, you can go to window and go to the same place, customization, and say, save layout as. Now I can call this the red shift. Let's call this red shift uh, grayscale gorilla. Okay, because we have our tools, we have Redshift, and we save it. Now it's gonna pop up in our little tabs up here. So now maybe you, you wanna jump into different modes here. You have the modeling mode and the sculpting mode and all these different tools you could use. But then as soon as you wanna go back to your regular layout, you just click Redshift GSG, and it's going to go exactly to this. And because we start made it a startup layout, anytime you open a new scene, it's gonna start here and let you search you know, your library for whatever you're looking for. And because we have Drop Zone installed and ready to go, anything that we wanna animate, for example, let's say this cube that we wanna animate this um, size here, you just literally drag it into Drop Zone and it adds a signal tag and you are now ready to animate this thing. So it's all set to Go. Thanks for watching everybody. And if you made it this far, let me know your favorite tool that you dock in your interface down in the comments. I would love to learn something new from you guys, maybe something I need to put in my interface. And if you're new here at Grayscale Gorilla, we have a ton of videos just like this to help you save time, work faster, and create more beautiful renders in Cinema 4D. And if that's you, if that's what you wanna do, click the subscribe button, do all the YouTube stuff, all right? All right, that's it for today. And I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye, everybody.